In the first part, we saw how to create this effect with these lines of varying thickness. And I mentioned it was based on an existing project. What I didn't mention is that there's some interaction in that project. We can click and generate these waves going across the lines. Um, and we're going to try to replicate this now in Touch Designer. You can notice there's also an, another effect happening there with these negative colors every time you click. Well, we don't need to worry about that. We're going to focus uh, on this animation of these lines. Let me show you how that looks in Touch Designer. So here we have our part two. Every time I interact, I generate these waves across our lines. And in order to create this animation, we need uh, two curves. One for the z-axis and one for the delay on the y-axis. The z-axis is the curve of each of the lines in our stack. So this means it animates very quickly towards the camera and then slowly falls back into place. And here we have a delay starting from the center and going towards the edges. So lines closer to the center animate very quickly and lines uh, at the edges take a few moments to animate. If you look at our network here, it's pretty much what we had uh, in part one, apart from these two nodes here at the top. So this, there's a base node and a wave top here. And everything in part two is happening inside this base. So you can start from the, the file uh, you created in part one, if you followed along, um, just save it as part two or just carry on working on the same file. Here I have my file from part one and I'm going to start by dropping a base comp up here. We can dive in and we need to create an input and output here and they're going to be of different types. So the input is going to be a chop. So we need a, an in chop and the output is going to be top. So we need an out top. We can zoom out and give ourselves some room here. And we can go back one level and already connect our input and output here. The input is going to be our existing SOP21, which are the channels of our stack SOP. So let's connect that. And the output is going to be a null top, which I want to call wave. Okay, now back inside the base and let's start working with, with our channels here. I'm only interested in the TY, so I'm going to drop a select shop. And in channel names, I'm going to pick TY. Then all the way over here, I'm going to drop a trigger chop. And from the trigger chop, I want a trail to see what that is doing. So we're going to notice that when the playhead reaches the end of the timeline here, it, it's going to trigger a curve. And this is not exactly the curve that we want. Uh, we saw the shape of the curve earlier. So I need to adjust a few parameters here uh, on the trigger chop. So in the attack tab, let's change the attack length to 0.1 and the attack shape to ease out. In the sustain tab, we change the decay length to 0.8 and the shape also is out. Everything else goes to zero here. Now, next time the playhead reaches the end, we're going to see a, a curve of the shape closer to what I showed you earlier. Now, I don't want to wait for the playhead, so let's add some interaction here to, to trigger our curve. I'm going to use the simplest form of interaction, which is the keyboard in. And by default, every time you press uh, the number one key, uh, it's going to trigger something. So now let's use a math operator to multiply that with our channels. Connect the keyboard in and under combine chops, select multiply. Now if we go down here, and I press one on my keyboard, I generate the curve every time. There's also another way to visualize this. Uh, we can use our tops here. 
So from the trigger, I dropped another null. And then from null, we go from top to top. And in the, in the common tab, we're going to select a fill viewer. We select fill and connect that to our out and toggle the display flag. Now, every time I press one, the screen flashes white. Um, there's a bit more work to be done here, but we can already use this uh, out in our um, in our main network. So we can go up one level, and again, I press one. You can see that the wave is flashing white here. And this is just another top, like our colors or brightness. So we can also use this in our GLSL shader. So let's go to the sampler tab once again and follow the existing convention and type S wave and reference the top called wave. And now one last time we need to edit our vertex shader. I'm going to drag it over here. And we can duplicate this line here, so uniform sampler 2D S wave. And we can also duplicate this line here. And instead of brightness, we're going to call it wave. And instead of S brightness, we want S wave. So basically reading the red channel of that texture. And this gives us another float, which we can use in our expression here. So the position Z of our vertices is going to be based on a constant of depth that we're passing in the brightness of the input image and the brightness of the wave, which is generated based on uh, interaction. So we save this back to touch designer. And now if I press one, I can see the entire image jumping. And if you're not seeing this effect, just make sure that your slider has a big enough uh, value here so to, to let you visualize this. Um, okay, so this part of network is finished. We don't need to change anything here. Uh, everything else is going to happen inside our base now. Um, we can see that here we only have one curve, but we have uh, 40 lines. So we need to make more lines here. And the way to do that is to insert a shuffle drop. And here in method, we use swap channels and samples. Now, if I zoom in here, I can see I have 40 channels. And if I go to our trail, I can see that now I also have uh, 40 curves here. But I have a problem now. I can, if I press one, I can see that only the top half of the screen is flashing white. Only half of the channels are being triggered. Uh, and that is because we have negative values here. So going from minus 20 to 20. And I don't want negative values. I want only positive values. So I need to get rid of channels. And the way to get rid of channels is to use a delete chop. If I go to the samples, the samples tab here and toggle delete samples, this already does what we are after. And that's because the, the default uh, condition here is less than value one and value one is zero. So values below zero were already deleted. So from minus 20, 20, we went to zero 20. Now if I press one, I can see that the screen is flashing again as we expected. Now let's have a look at our curves here. Press one and you can see that all of the curves are being generated at the same time and we want them to be delayed. So I need a delay chop, which I'm going to insert before our trigger here. The, the default delay value is one. So if I press our key, it waits one second and then flashes the screen all at once. That's not what we're after. We want a different delay per channel. So if I go to the documentation here, we can see that it already recommends a way to get a delay per channel, and that's to use me.chan index. So I'm just going to copy this 
and I'm going to enter that expression here and I don't want to wait 20 seconds so I'm going to multiply this by 0.1 and now if I press 1 I can see that each channel is delayed by 0.1 second. Um, you probably notice that this is going from the bottom of the screen to the top and now we only have 20 channels instead of 40. So we can duplicate this here in our tops and we can also mirror them at the same time. So I'm going to insert a transform top. I also need to go to the common tab and select um, fill. Then in the tile tab, I want extend to be mirror, toggle limit tiles, tile U is going to be zero and one, and tile V is going to be minus one and one. Now go to the transform tab and scale Y is going to be 0.5 and pivot Y is going to be one. Now if I press one, you can see that it is, the animation is starting from the center. Now this is close to what we're after, but this animation is not a curve, uh, it's a line. And, and we can see that because we're, we're moving at regular steps of 0.1 and I want this to be a curve. I want it to, to start from the center and then ease out towards the edges. If we go back to the documentation, we can see that there is another way of passing delays to, to this chop, and that is to use a table. So we can create a curve and then send the curve values to a table and then use that here in our delay chop. So let's start with the curve. Under our shuffle here, we drop another chop, which is going to be an S curve. So this is not really the shape of the curve that we want. Um, so we need only the top half of the curve here. So I'm going to drop a delete chop. And on the samples again, I toggle delete samples, and this time value one is going to be 0.5. So this is the correct shape of the curve that we want. And in, in this case, the length of the curve is 1000, but uh, I don't need it to be 1000. I need it to be uh, just as long as the number of channels we have in our shuffle here. So let's use an expression for that. So I'm going to reference our operator shuffle, shuffle one, and we type dot num chance. So now our curve has a length of 20. And here, because I deleted half of it, uh, now the, the length uh, became 10. So let me double this. And now after our delete, we have uh, 20 channels. And there's a problem here because we used only the top half of the curve, so it's starting at 0.5 and going to 1, and we want it to start from from 0 uh, and go to 0.5. So we need a, a math chop, and uh, we can use the range tab. I'm going to use this tab here and pre-add minus 0.5. So now we remap this um, to from 0 to 0.5. Now we drop a null because we're going to change from chops to to that. Let's give ourselves some room here. Drag this over here. And now we can drop a chop to that. And we can see that our values are here going from zero and easing out to 0.5 going to drop another null from this dot so we can use this value and the name here I'm going to use the same name as in the documentation I'm going to call it delays table and we can go back to the documentation and copy this line exactly as it is here go to our delay replace this expression I'm going to align our network here and now if I press one, I can see that there is a curve
curve being generated from our new expression. Let's go back one level and let's see how that is working. It's working much better. Let, let's zoom out with the camera a bit from maybe let's use 150 here so we can see the full image. Press one on the keyboard every time you press you generate a curve. And this is the effect. Um, if you want you can edit your S curve and change the animation or re rearrange the values there so it get a bit faster or a bit slower. So this is the effect and there's a bit more to be explored here um, but I'll leave that up to you. If you have any questions feel free to ask and I would say that this concludes the part two of this tutorial.